Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in again. Today's video will be the first part of two videos. Uh, in this first part, we'll be talking about how to run a hierarchical regression. And in the next video, what we'll be talking about is how to write up and interpret, as well as how to make tables for our hierarchical regression analysis. So in today's video, we'll be going over how to compute descriptive statistics and a correlation matrix for our data set. So these are just good practices uh, in order to inspect the data before running the actual hierarchical regression. And then we'll go into the hierarchical regression. And what we'll be doing is we'll be estimating three regression models in sequence. And for each regression model, we'll be adding a set of predictors. And our biggest question is how does each set of predictors contribute to the prediction of Y? And so in order to formally test this, we'll be looking at the R squared change. And this is an F test that tests whether the additional sets of predictors offer a significant amount of prediction for our criterion, which in this case is Y. So again, today we'll be going over how to estimate the hierarchical regression. And then in the next video, we'll be going up how to write, we'll be going over how to write up the hierarchical regression, as well as how to create some tables to organize the information from our analysis in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this video, we'll be using SPSS. And so here I have SPSS open already, and by default, it opens up this untitled data set. So to start, I'm gonna go ahead and open up um, our SPSS data set, and, that, and remember that it ends in .sav. So I'm gonna to go to open, data, and then go ahead and just locate where your data set is. So for me, it's in the C drive, in the data sets folder. All right. And then today we'll be working with regdata2.sav. And so once you have it highlighted, you could just go ahead and click open. So I'll bring the data set in here as well as the output viewer. So all of our output will appear here in the output viewer, which is a separate window from our data set, Reg Data 2. And I'll just take a quick look to make sure everything looks okay. So we have our Y variable and X1 through X5. So that all looks good. We should have 150 observations. Perfect. And then we'll take a quick look in variable view Again, we have our variable names here, and they're all scale, which is perfect, because all of these are continuous, uh, continuous measures. So we're good there. All right, so before running the hierarchical regression, we're gonna go ahead and run some descriptive statistics. So we'll go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and then click on Descriptives. So if you just hit Shift, and highlight all the way down to X5. Um, that will select all of the variables and then we'll go ahead and switch them here into the variables box. And then we'll look at what we want to have run. So we want our means, our standard deviations, minimum and maximum. Uh, if you want the range or variance, you can select that. And then I'll just add skew and kurtosis. Click OK and then click OK here. So we automatically get switched over to our output um, viewer here. And here are the descriptive statistics that we requested. So uh, the ones that I want to look at are the means and standard deviations. Just make sure that my variables are uh, looking how they're supposed to and that there's nothing out of place. So Y has a mean of around 50 with standard deviation 10. It looks good. X1 has a mean of 10 and a standard deviation around three. So I'm uh, rounding here roughly. Uh, same thing for X2, mean around 10 and standard deviation around three. And then X3 through X5 all have a mean around 10 and a standard deviation around five. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, a mean around five and a standard deviation around two. There you go. Okay. And then if we look at the minimum and maximums, 
you know, con uh, considering that I generated the data, I know what the value should be within. But if you have your own data set, um, you know, you could look here to see if there are any out of range values or any reason for concern before proceeding with running your hierarchical regression. So everything looks good. Um, there's skew and kurtosis if you want to look at those to assess uh, the normality of your variables. And so, you know, running descriptives is just good practice for taking a look at what your variables are like before running any important analyses. And so in similar fashion, uh, we're going to go back into our data set and we're going to go ahead and estimate our correlation matrix to kind of look at the relationships between our variables. So we'll go to correlate, bivariate, again, hold shift and click down all the way to X5. Then we'll go ahead and transfer these into the variables box. And then in options, you can request means and standard deviations if you want. Um, so if you don't run descriptive separately, you can go ahead and select this and it'll it'll do it all at once, so that's kind of nice. Uh, but we'll leave it unchecked for now. And then uh, we want Pearson correlations, we want two-tailed tests, um, and then it's I guess it's fine if it flags significant correlations. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So kind of what I want to look at here is here's my row for Y, and then we can see that all the predictors here are moderately to kind of high correlated with our criterion. So correlations range from 0.24 to 0.43 with rounding, um, and they're all significant. Um, you can see that by the asterisk, but then you can also see that because all the significance values are below 0.05. And then also in this matrix you can go ahead and look at, um, I don't know, some of the correlations are maybe low. So let's see. So here we have a low correlation between X1 and X3. It's negative 0.01, so that's pretty negligible. And then here's another low one between X4 and X3, 0.04. So again, this correlation matrix can just give you an idea of how your predictors are related to your outcome, as well as how the predictors are related to each other. Okay, so now that we've, uh, you know, We've done our descriptive statistics and our correlation matrix. We can move on to um, the hierarchical regression. Uh, so the way that we do that in SPSS, we go to Analyze, and under Regression, we will select Linear. And then the way we do uh, hierarchical is we use this block um, function here. So first we'll put Y in the dependent box. And then in block one, I want to first run a model with X1 and X2. So I'll go ahead and put that in my independent box. And then I will click next. In the next block, I want to see if X3 and X4 add significant prediction above and beyond X1 and X2. So I will add in X3 and X4. And then one more block to see if X5 adds significant prediction over and above X1, X2, X3, and X4. Now I'll talk more about um, how we're adding these in in sets, but again, our initial model is X1 and X2, and from there I want to see if X3 and X4 add significant prediction over and above X1 and X2, and then for the third regression, I want to see if X5 adds significant prediction over and above X1, X2, X3, and X4. So it's it's a somewhat of sequential testing to see if at each step or at each block, if the set of predictors that we're entering in adds a significant amount of prediction for our criterion Y. All right, so now that I have my three blocks specified, um, I can go ahead and click here to see what statistics I want. So um, I want my estimates, and then make sure that R squared change is um, checked here. This is what's going to give us uh, that F test for if each set of predictors that we add for each block is significant above and beyond the predictors that are already in the model. You can request some descriptives, part partial and semi-partial correlations if you want, but uh, for now we'll just stick to the estimates and the R-squared change. That's what we'll focus on. 
I'll go ahead and click continue and then that's all that we have to specify and then we can go ahead and click OK. All right. So there are a bunch of uh, output tables here. Um, here is R squared as well as the R squared change and the F test for the R squared change. Here are the ANOVA tables for each model. So model one, model two, and model three. And then here we have the coefficients for model one, model two, and model three. SPSS also includes this excluded variables portion of the output, but uh, we won't be focusing on that. So just this coefficients, ANOVA, and model summary. And then here it reminds us that in step one, we entered in X1 and X2 as predictors in step two, X3 and X4, in addition to X1 and X2, and then in the third block, we added X5 in addition to X1 through X4. So we're always adding. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with, I'm going to go through each model one by one, even though uh, SPSS kind of merges all of the information together. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with uh, model one, and we'll start with the ANOVA. So on two and 147 degrees of freedom, we get an F of 11.84, which is less than 0.05. So model one, as a whole, with X1 and X2, is, a, uh, is, a, is significantly predicting Y. And then uh, for the coefficients, uh, again, for model one, we have our predictors here, so x1 and x2. We have the co unstandardized coefficients, the standard errors. We have the standardized coefficients, the t-statistics, and then the significance values, or the p-values. So uh, both are less than 0.05, so x1 and x2 are both significant predictors of y. And the interpretations for these stay the same. So for every unit increase in X1 holding X2 constant, Y is expected to increase 0.72 units with rounding. Similarly, holding X1 constant, uh, Y is expected to increase 0.90 units for every unit increase in X2. So again, our, uh, our interpretations of the regression coefficients or the slopes remain the same. Okay. So that's model one. Moving on to model two, on four and 145 degrees of freedom, our F statistic is 21.97 with rounding. Again, this is less than 0.05, so it's statistically significant. And this suggests that our model with, so remember model two is X1, X2, X3, and X4. So our model with X1, X2, X3, and X4 predicting Y is significantly predicting Y. And looking down here for the coefficients for model two, um, again, we have our unstandardized coefficients here for X1 through X4, our standard errors, our standardized coefficients, our t-tests, or t-statistics, and then the P values. So here, everything again is significant, all um, under 0.05. So X1, X2, X3, and X4 are all significant predictors of Y. And now we come up here to our R square change. And so here we get the R squares across the three models. So for model one with X1 and X2, 14% of the variance in Y was accounted for. And then for model two with X1, X2, X3, and X4, about 38% of the variance in Y was accounted for. Now what we really care about here is the, is the, um, the F statistic for the R square change. So, here on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom going from model 1 to model 2 so we want to look in this row here row 2 on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom our f change is 27.779 and this uh, the p value for that is less than 0.05 so what this is telling us is that the addition of x3 and x4 
or let me say it this way, x3 and x4 as a set add, add a significant amount of prediction for the criterion y over and above x1 and x2. Because from model 1 to model 2, we're adding this set here, x3 and x4. So again, uh, in column 2, because we want to compare model 1 and model 2, so we want to look here in column 2, on 2 and 145 degrees of freedom, we get, a, we get an F change or an F statistic of 27.779, and this p-value is less than 0.05. So this means that the predictors that we entered in step two, which is x3 and x4 together as a set, offer a significant amount of prediction over and above the predictors that were already in the model, which are x1 and x2. Okay, now moving on to our last model, uh, model three, on five and 144 degrees of freedom, uh, the F statistic is 21.0. 069 and the p-value again is less than 0.05 so our model with all of the predictors x1 x2 x3 x4 and x5 uh, this model significantly predicts y and looking down here at our coefficients again we have our unstandardized coefficients our standard errors our standardized coefficients the t statistic and then our p-values. And all of these p-values, again, are less than 0.05. So uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5 are all significant predictors of y. And then remember, the thing we care about the most with this hierarchical regression is going from model 2, which is x1 through x4, to model 3, where we add x5, does that add a significant amount of prediction over and above x1, x2, x3, and x4, the predictors from our second model. And so looking at this third row, which compares the second model to the third model, we see that on, uh, on 1 and 144 degrees of freedom, the F statistic is 11.259, which again is less than 0.05. So this means that x5 does indeed contribute a significant amount of prediction over and above the first four predictors, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And there is a significant change in r square. So we go from 0.377, about 38% of the variance accounted for in y, to 0.422, so about 42% of, um, of the variance of y accounted for. Okay, so that was a mouthful, um, but we've gone over uh, the, the R-squared change and the F test associated with the R-squared change. And when you're running a hierarchical regression, um, although the R, all of the R-squares do matter, so it's good to look at those and how they change across uh, model 1 to model 3. But uh, when looking at the F test for the R-squared change, we want to start at row 2 because that compares model one and model two. And then we also want to look at row three, which compares model two and model three. We've also looked at our ANOVA table, um, looking at how each model accounts for uh, variation in Y, models one, two, and three, and then the coefficients with those associated models. All right. So again, for this video, um, we were just estimating our uh, hierarchical regression. And in the next video, we'll be going over how to write up the hierarchical regression, how to interpret the output, as well as how to organize it in tables. Um, so that's for the next video, is how to put all of this stuff together and how to, um, how to write it up and organize all the information that we have here in the output in tables. And with that, uh, that concludes this video on running a hierarchical regression in SPSS.